Uh, kia ora yeah. I'm Mary Ann Cluard. I am the GP Services Lead um, for Mahitahi Hauhora and I'm the Neighbourhood Healthcare Homes Regional Coordinator here in Te Tai Tokoro, working with the Pro Care and Comprehensive Care Group. Thank you, lovely. Nai. Morning, everyone. Um, my name is Ni. I oh, am sorry, based in. Oh. Apologise. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, lovely. Oh. Hi, I'm. <laughs> oh yes, no, that's fine. Um, I am based in Wellington. I am the healthcare home change facilitator um, here in Wellington, um, and I look after the Wairarapa locality and Porirua and North locality here in Wellington. Thank you, Nee. Patria. Uh, Morena, ko Patria Tokoingwa. Um, I am Patria, I'm in Well South, and I'm the other half of the uh, healthcare home team with Ali. Thank you. Rachel. Kia ora everyone, uh, ko Rachel McCallum Tuku Ingwa Ki Pegasus Health. Uh, I'm the Operations Manager here for Provider Services. Um, Lovey will be here um, at some point, I would imagine, um, also. Um, and welcome, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Renee. Um, Morena Koto, if you Fano, ko Renee Toka Ingawa, uh, ko Wai Harakiki Toko Painga. Um, he practice liaison aho or te tima e te taui or te waka pho up in Melbourne. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you, Renee. Cheryl. I'm oh, Morena oh. Koto, ko Cheryl Parkin, toku ingua. I'm Provider Networks Manager at Health Hawks Bay PHO. Um, and we're a little bit behind the game, so we're trying to catch up with Healthcare Home. And um, the, yeah, it's nice to be here uh, in these hui now. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So just yeah, welcome everybody. We have been um, inviting people to speak about their various roles within general practice and how we can make it um, the patient journey a much more um, effective and pleasurable one, a holistic one. And so um, one of the things that we wanted to do is bring in um, Diane Simpson. She, I'd like, and I'll let her introduce herself when I hand over to her. She's a wellness practitioner in, in a general practice here in Whangarei, in Tikiponga. And um, Diane has many years experiencing working holistically and supporting Hoorda for the community in Tikiponga. Her role has changed quite a lot over the time that I personally have worked with Diane. And um, she's just such a vital part of the team at Tiki. And, Really, her role is, um, it's just been amazing to see what she's able to do and, you know, so effective, particularly in the mental health, um, for our mental health clients who come in, um, and, but I'll let her explain that. And please, at the end, feel free to ask some questions. Um, yeah, so I will stop sharing and we will, um, so... Diane can introduce herself. Here we go, oh, Diane. Can you well? Thank, <laughs> thank you for that, um, Carol, and thanks for um, the opportunity to um, talk about my passion. Yes. I, um, which is social work and being in a medical centre um, is my ultimate job and has always been there. I've been in Tiki for um, about eight years. Um, and prior to um, me coming in, there was a, another social worker for about seven or eight years, Shelley Misale, and she's now, um, she works out of Te Hanoi, which is a medical centre downtown. So I basically took over her position. Um, so there's just two of us um, that are um, basically full-time in Whangarei and have been for many years. Yeah, the practice, the doctors, um, and I, I mean the original doctors, because um, we're now known as the doctors Tikipunga, by, um, owned by Green Cross, 
but um, prior to that, the, the original founding of the medical centre um, actually employed the social worker. So wow. they have um, um, insight. I, I believe they got they got funding through the PHO. Um, yeah, so we're talking 15 odd years ago and the position has been there ever since. Yeah, and um, I've been through about four managers, um, but the position has been kept. Yeah, so um, yeah, my um, I've always wanted um, to actually work with people who, through no fault of their own, things happen to them, um, and that's been I've I've worked in many um, different um, sectors and um, education, um, uh, corrections. Um, justice, um, care and protection, um, and I brought that into my health role, which is um, is basically um, anybody that has any social issue um, and comes to a doctor for is um, well, most people do come to a doctor. Really, the social issue is 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 there, um, and um, have. Um, incorporated all that 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 experience um and all those different sectors because we've um we come across that in a um every day yeah. every day yeah yes yeah. 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 yeah 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 so i guess yeah initially when i started it was very much a um social work role in as far as referrals um, to other out out to the into the community um, and as I've gone along I've developed developed it to actually really meet the in in-house I guess mm. need um, and um, still absolutely um, do referrals um, appropriately but we really kind of really triage that to get the right support at the right time in the right way. Um, the community is, um, is in, in all sectors of, of health and um, well-being um, quite not well, that well resourced. Um, people aren't able to access that often in a timely manner. So that's where I pick up. Um, a, a lot of that to um, just help them on their their journey for what they want mm. to achieve and where that is. Mm -hmm. So that incorporates housing, um, a lot of advocacy with work and income, um, employment, lots of issues with um, employers and and health and and all that um, affecting do quite a bit of um, relationship work um, and also, of course, um, looking at, at care and protection issues, but support support um, families and who, whoever it is through court processes, um, which really impact, is impacting on their um, mood and their um, mental health. Mm. Um, yeah, and their, and their physical health, isn't it? I mean, it's just, Absolutely. we've been so lucky to have that incorporated when I was in the practice um, as part of our, our, our work, our stream. And it was, I think, vital to have a full-time social worker in-house. I mean, how lucky were we? Can you just tell us a, a day or a, um, a kind of an overview of what you would do in a day or a week? You know, a snapshot. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I actually had pulled um, a week out, um, so it was um, at the end of March, um, and I just do a four-day week. Yeah. Um, and I am very protective of that because my fifth, my day day off is um, for my own wellness. Um, and um and I do things that I talk to other people about that they should be incorporating in their life. So I I I practice and mod and model that. Um and um so would probably never go to a five week job. Mm -hmm. Um just yeah. We work very hard when I'm there and it's head down tail up mm -hmm. and um I hit the floor running um and I most days. 
So um, I, I, in this week, I had um, 54 direct contacts and interventions with, with patients. Um, and that and and from that I did some brief intervention work um, and I use um, uh, using multiple um, motivational interviewing or fact or just some um, kind of um, directive C CBT to help in that acute situation. Um, I did um, some um, other assessments. Um, and I should mention that my framework is really te te whara, tapawha. I um, I use that in all my um, my interventions, really, and um, and my assessments. Um, so we're looking holistically at. Um, the key. My, sorry, it's my dog. Oh, right. Yeah. Um. Um. And um. And, and all, all what I do, um, not just that medical model of what's wrong with you and I can um, fix it. Um, yeah, so it's so offering solutions to people um, and they choose and um, and then support them in the choice that they've made. Um, so, but I do do um, mental health and wellbeing um, assessments too. Um, we're like, like the GAD and the, um, the PHQ. I do quite a few of the mini ACEs now. We are coming coming through with people, um, and I probably do a lot lot more um, than a mini ACE just with a nurse. That's often what it is. Um, I will um, do other assessments of their social situation as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and during that week, I also used the um, Edinburgh postnatal depression scale um, with a young young mum who had a young baby and was um, struggling. Um, and I also did some counselling triage. So our doctors aren't um, tending to refer straight to the PHO now or to to a counsellor like they used to. They come uh, coming through through me, um, and in that I find the best way to and the be, and the best counselling that is needed. Um, during that week, we had I often had disclosures, um, and during that week I had a couple of disclosures and doing a triage. So that would be the um, ACC pathway, which would never have been um, picked up. Um, also, if they meet the threshold um, for um, work and income through the disability allowance, um, I um, would send them down that pathway rather than to our PHO for five brief interventions. Mm -hmm. um, any families um, counselling that's required, um, that's accessible through Family Works and Jigsaw and they have parenting programmes. So I facilitate that. Um, yeah, so we're getting the right right place. Um, I did some advocacy that week with um, Work and Income, ACC and Kainga Ora, the, um, with the housing, um, do Quite a bit of that at the moment. We have quite a few of our patients who are on the wait list, um, and so it's supporting them um, through that, making sure they have all their information too. Kainga, I do a lot of support letters um, um, for the um, for the doctors, basically. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I. Um, had some follow-up referrals that I had done um, with NASC. Um, so people wanting to know where that 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 is or what what the care plan is, and just just following that up with them. Um, mental health and addictions. I work with them a lot, um, and uh, will ask them for advice and. Um, yeah, they, they can't come back to me. Um, we had a police, I had a um, police negotiation um, with one of our guys who had sent a text to an ACC um, um, staff member saying um, things that didn't look too good. So I contacted, she contacted me, I contacted the police and we got a welfare check um, put in place um, for that. Um, 
so I did some supportive counselling about some grief and loss and loneliness. Um, a lot of people, they kind of, you know, did working through that process. Um, and in the moment, uh, um, come to the doctor and, yeah, so we, we look at how, you know, where, um, how life is changing for them and um, and perhaps um, other ways, when, especially when they've lost their lifelong partner. Um, and I did a home visit as well um, that week to, um, to whānau who were wanting a meeting about some care options um, for their dad, um, who was also present and um, he had just come out of hospital and um, yeah, and just seeing what, what was available and, and what he wanted and how that was going to be worked out. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, yeah. a, a, busy, a busy week. Thank you. Yeah. You yeah, there was some health coaching in there with a patient who wants to lose some weight. Um, and, um, and yeah, and, and also I do quite a lot about finances um, with people because money is a huge financial stress, is, is huge and impacts our health. Um, and yeah. And, and on top of that, um, when she's not uh, that's that busy, um, she's got the rest of the team knocking on her door regarding pathways. Because I, I see, you know, Diane's roles are very much connector into the greater community, which resources to use, who to go to. Um, do, do you know, like she knows, um, she knows that network of people. And so, or which form to fill in. That's a huge part of where you'd go, Diane. You know, so, so she was the expert when it came to, because every, you know, when our GPs come in, particularly those from um, overseas or our locums, they don't know um, what the local processes are. And that's where this role is just um, so helpful because they get, our, our clients get sent to the wrong places, they get the wrong forms filled in and everyone gets really frustrated. The needs are not being met. Um, the other big part I've always seen about your role is the NAS assessment, do you know, um, able to get a, a higher priority put in perhaps, mm, possibly, possibly. possibly. <laughs> or a better yeah. um, review. Yeah. Like she was saying, when one of us, one of the nurses do, do um, a mini ace, we've got a very short allocated time and we run through it but it will be a lot more involved when you do it. That's correct, isn't it? The other really important part that you might like to talk about is the um, triage. When someone comes in on the doctor's triage who's mentally unwell, what oh, right. tends to yeah. happen with yeah. that? Yeah. Um, yeah, not always, yeah. but, but um, I can acutely um, see see them. Um, and we... Um, and. Often, um, yes, um, it is very important to get some medication to be um, to get some sleep. Um, but then, I, if I meet with them, we can do a safety plan um, and also just look at their supports and um, what what that day is going to look like for them. And then perhaps you know work out into the next the next week. You know, mm -hmm. so um, we have a if if I had so, oh, if I have somebody with me, um, we kind of have this understanding that my door is shut. Otherwise, if I'm just working um, and um, on 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 things, following up things, and there's someone that needs my, my door, I I open my door slightly, um, so um, staff can come in at any time. That's yeah, um, that's how we manage it. Seems to be working, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and when you talk about staff, another part of that role is to support the staff. Um, I know that um, that's been, you know, as far as the mental wellness or the um, the support of the staff working in such an environment as general practice, to have to have Diane there to go and talk to has been um, is a really important part of our our whānau at work as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, works both ways. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, particularly yeah. Um, us to you. So yeah. um, that's always been great. Okay, the other, I was just going to talk. Does anyone have any questions about um, how this role is? Oh, one thing I was going to say before that is that with the hip and health 
um, hip, hip and health coach role coming in, how um, we were planning to run it was that um, Diane would triage and, and then go through with them as well, wouldn't you? But it hasn't yeah. come apart. We, we haven't um, had that at Tiki yet. yet. Yeah. 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 Um, and a lot of that's because um, I have I am, am there. Yes. Um, and um, yeah, so that's still to be worked through of how we would work Jesus, yes. which is just another kind of dimension to practices that haven't had anything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes. Yeah. So, so you have been fortunate to have you for, we yeah. have a social worker employed anyway. So, yeah, it's a high needs community, but there's lots of other high needs community as well. I see Renee, which, there you go. Um, I got a, um, Obviously, a lot of your work is around the enrolled population in your general practice. Um, I'm not sure what the unenrolled population looks like in your area or whether you've got wait lists and, you know, how do you see your role or could you see your role, um, you know, taken into to, to that vulnerable population? What did she say? Uh, Renee, can you just repeat that first part, uh, which is quite hard to hear? Uh, apologies, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's good. Um, so obviously with your work um, with the enrolled population in your general practice, that's, you know, really awesome. Um, but obviously there's a big unenrolled population, um, you know, everywhere. Um, and just wondering how or if you've done any work with that population and maybe what that looks like in, in the future. Is there, is there wait lists at practices? Do you tap into that um, or do you just stick with the enrolled population via general practice? Yeah, um, my my role, so I'm employed to work at um, the doctors to keep on up, yeah, with who comes, uh, is enrolled with us. Um, sometimes, because we do have it advertised on our um, outside, you know, of what, what um, the practice offers and there's social worker on there. So um, on a few occasions we have had people just come in and I just want to talk to the social worker and they're not um, enrolled patients, I would work with them and find that, that support out in the community. But I don't go out and um, and um, find, find people. Um, I don't have capacity to do that. Um, and I'm actually paid by the doctors to Kipunga as well, so um, to work in their, in their practice. Um, we also do have another um, practice that, um, in Kamo, um that's owned by the doctors and they don't have a social worker. Theoretically, I should be also um, available to them, but there's only one, one of me, but when those doctors um, have um, queries or there is very complex cases, which they do, I um, pick them up. Usually, I, though, um, because that practice is quite small and there's not really the capacity or physical space to go over there, I bring them over to Tiki. So, you know, like, yeah, um, but they're still within the um, Green Cross. Um, sort of um, population base, yeah. Just as well as that, Renee, where, where they are in Tiki, there's a lot of, um, would, I would say, acutes just turn up who are unenrolled. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so right. we've had a lot um, a lot of that, that Diane has to, um, or she would lead through on that, like people sleeping at the doctors, um, people... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, people in great need who do turn up. So there is that that side of it. Yeah, but, yeah. You, but you're not actively going in. No. Yeah. So and and the far um as 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 people sleeping on our door, which we are trying to alter. Mm -hmm. Um, but but um yes um I just I I get in contact with open arms. I work really closely with them and. You know, like so, there's agencies in um, Whangarei that we that I can tap into, and um, and yeah, and they tend to um, support support them, mm. as well as our enrolled patients as well. You know, like yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Marianne, 
Oh, I just look. I've worked with Jai. She's fantastic, and she has a very unique um, piece of work that you don't normally see in primary care. But I just want to make it um, quite clear about the difference between what Diane does and the difference between what a hip does, um, because Diane is not a hip, and a hip is not Diane, and I think that needs to be quite clear. Whereas a hip is a brief intervention. And they work along automatic um, pathways for things like, you know, brief interventions around smoking, brief advice and diabetes management, um, like trying to get people along along the road of medication compliance. Whereas Diane works in a much more complex space. And I think that's something that we need to be cognizant of at the end of the day, because I've seen Diane work bloody miracles over the years with people and work really, really hard and advocate for people far longer than what a hip is expected to do in a much greater capacity than what a hip is expected to do. Um, and I am a big advocate for social workers in primary care, actually, because I think they fill a space that is not being filled in a lot of um, what the government pushes out as a mandated, you know, hip and health coach role. So if the practices have got the capacity to be able to hire a social worker and hire a really great social worker, then that actually fills another gap that releases the clinicians from having to actually do a lot of that navigating that Diane does and also that connections with other agencies that we would have no idea on how to engage and connect with. The supportive counselling that Diane does makes a world of difference to people and particularly with an older population. Um, around that, you know, loneliness and being able to support individuals through relationship um, breakdowns and lots of really sad um, socio situations. So um, I just wanted to advocate the difference, God, it's still ringing, the difference for what Diane does versus a hip and health coach. Thanks for that, Mary. And it's absolutely right. And that continuity of care and, that, and building relationships so through the years as well yeah. you know like we might all go oh my goodness and Diane will come no no it's fine you know it's fine I've been there it's fine um and so yeah it's like we have the, we had the privilege of having an expert in in the field um and like like Marianne said um ideally to have a social worker in every general practice would be amazing you know that and I think that's the um the what really up is with with me is that they I, I don't have to close the case you know like you've had your five five sessions now you know um it's yeah, hey um certainly we I, I'm not in their lives and um and it's giving them them options but they're able to come back and um and we're able to you know like really really look at, at what's now going on in their lives and the impact of of that and um and there's no pressure to kind of tick those boxes um I have a, a supervision, a very good supervisor, um, and I am now meeting with her twice, um, like fortnightly. Um, we're mandated as social registered social workers that we have to have supervision at least monthly. Um, that's not enough in this this complex um, case, but she very very much keeps me on track of um you know step back um yeah this is it or or step in here or have you considered this and um yeah and that's a really really well it's absolutely vital um for a social worker um and um working in this complex and quite isolating um environment um i come with a completely different um perspective um, to the medical model. So that has been a challenge to me um, over the over the years as well. But um, you know, I've probably been there too long now. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's like yeah. When, yeah, when, yeah. when you're talking about that wellness of um, you know, keeping ourselves well within that environment, Diane is constantly also reminding us and as staff members, you know, is that your problem? You know, can you let it go? Um, you know, constantly I would I would have. Um, so, so, yeah, not only were you getting mentored, but you were actually mentoring um, the staff and, and reminding us 
you know, what was our responsibility and what wasn't. And sometimes those lines are quite hard to find within, you know, so much need and so much um, work to do. And I think this is really um, important to be talking about because we are looking for more creative ways to to manage within general practice. And, um, you know, we often say there's not enough nurses, not enough doctors, but this picture is really um, such a holistic approach and such a um, such a really healthy approach within general practice. And I th I've seen it working. And um, as Mary Ann said, and this has been such a um, great part of, an important part of the team, wouldn't you agree? Yes, yes. Hmm. Anyone else would like to say anything? Jazz, would you like to? Because Jazz too comes from a social work background. I do. And um, I'm really excited to hear that, you know, there are general practice teams that have social work. Because one question I just wanted to ask, um, well, I have a couple of questions. One is, um, do you know, Dan, how many practices around the how many social workers there are that are practicing? Is there a network of social workers that are practicing in general practice that can connect or are connecting? Do any of the, our other healthcare home leads know of any practices in your networks that have social workers? There's only one other in North in Northland, as far as I know, yeah. um, that are offering social work services. That the hip the hip roles kind of been the what's the word I'm yeah. looking for that it, you know you, I think you all as the, it's <laughs> been offered as that kind of yeah. um, filler however like I said before that's two completely different spaces and roles and skill sets actually um, and that's why I advocate quite heavily for social workers in general practice because we have got very complex communities um, particularly in Northland um, but also throughout other parts of the country and look, look, we're talking about the Hawke's Bay now it's got a whole another different level of complexity after the cyclone mm -hmm. and flooding and and we need to be in Auckland as well. You know, the floods uh, have been very traumatic in Auckland and they still create long-term trauma and anxiety and loss of um, housing. So I think it's something that if you can afford to have a social worker or work with another practice that um, come together with a collective interest around having a social worker, then you can have an impact. And um, sharing a social worker across practices is not ideal and it's not perfect, but it's definitely something that may be supportive of your enrolled population. Just my two cents. Yeah, you're, you're right, Marianne. It's a different kind of skill set and it's complementary to um, the skill set that, you know, traditionally exists in general practice. And um, I just wanted to pick up your point, Renee, around the unenrolled population. So while, Diane, you're busy with the patients that are enrolled in the practice, and I just wonder um, within some PHOs, there are often social workers or kind of community health workers, and that kind of skill set sits in the PHO. And so it, you could argue it's responsibility of the PHO then to take care of the unenrolled population and in that aspect so um yeah i just kind of wanted to put that put that out there thank you is anyone else on there we go cheryl 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 i think renee might have had her hand up yes yeah. oh, sorry oh, there you go renee just, just a quick question um what does the funding look like what's the charge for the patient what does that model look like Okay, um, so there's no charge to the patient um, and I don't um, charge um, for a mini ace either, which they do get charged if they see see a nurse. I, I To me, that's just part of um, providing a um, holistic um, ass assessment and I don't charge for if we did an audit or a GAD or anything like that, so I can't see the, um, the issue. Um, so, um, so we're currently, we are under the um, ProCare and they give us bulk funding um, and I, I actually don't know, I just know that I get paid e each week um, and I'm happy with my pay um, and, um, and I negotiate that with my manager each year. Um, but yeah, so, but what we have started, what I have started doing, it used to be funded or most of it funded through the PHO, through Mahitahi. Mm. Um, not quite all, I think. Um, 
yeah, Marianne's yeah, agree. Are you agreeing with me? Yeah. Um, but now we're under pro care, so that's a different type of um, um, model. And uh, so I have started to just so, and I did that with um, Carol when she was there, um, just so we kind of get um, some sense of of what it's costing or um, the, the practice is that I do charge, but there's no charge to the patient, just um, facilitate that through and put a draw down on that money. Um, and um, yeah, for, for what I, for what I'm doing. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's how the practice has decided to use that money, I guess. Um, yeah, along with other, um, when we identify people that, you know, can't afford services and that that's a barrier. Um, so I work a lot with that that too and um, set up appointments with doctors and there's no charge because we, we use that through um, ProCare funding. Yeah, so, yeah, very flexible. Yeah. Okay, does that answer your question, Renee? Yeah, great. Okay, Cheryl. Awesome, thank you. Um, this is so cool to listen to what you're doing um, and it just made me think of some of the things that are happening here. So a few years ago, our PHO um, had an external review, I guess, of our programs and what we were offering and have decided to do things differently. So we've bundled up our Care Plus and SIA funding and other bits and pieces into a priority partnership, population partnership plan um, and one of the practices have you know that that's um, a high trust kind of funding model um, and we've reduced the reporting we, we produce data for them and a report here um, but you know the, the the option is for the practice you know your population so you use the funding um, in whatever way you think you're going to close the gap or reduce inequity um, and one of the practices have decided to employ a social worker which is amazing with some of their funding um, but that's fairly new so I will be checking in with them soon to see how that's going um, but and you know honestly, it's it's probably the biggest practice in Hawke's Bay. They've been crying out for that um, resource for a very long time. So that's yeah, that's exciting. Um, and then the other comment I was just going to make was around um, we've got a supported enrolment Manu Taupua program um, that we have had going probably for about six months or so. Um, and ha that program has a navigator. So um, the lovely Lance, who used to be a health coach, is now the person that works with each of the people that are referred into the program to try and match them up with a practice um, that suits them and geographically and in other ways. Um, the challenge there is that you know, there's not that many practices who are, have open um, enrolment at the moment, but there is some discretion and there's quite a bit of funding attached to that um, for the patient uh, and um, for the pharmacy as well. So, yeah, just a couple of things I thought I'd drop in there because it kind of seems related. But yeah, lovely listening to what you've got going on up there, Diane. Um, and yeah, well, I'm interested to find out how our social worker is finding things and, and yeah, how that's going for that health centre. Thank you. Happy to support them too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That would yeah. be great to yeah. Yeah. have kind of that need support going because, you know, we, we all do some things well, you know, and having that peer support. Mm -hmm. I oh, if you wouldn't mind sharing your contact details, Diane, that would be awesome. And I it's can, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Yes, and, and Diane's been doing it for a long time. So, yeah, be very helpful. Our expert. Okay, so Robin Ann has um, arrived, so is there anything else you wanted to add to that, Diane? Thank we... you so much for um, listening to me, and um, yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 a really, pro it's a privilege to, to work in, in, in health, and mm -hmm. yeah. Inter interesting, when you're doing a different role, you did say, I did pick up on you saying that you kind of, it's a lonely role sometimes, you know, oh, because absolutely. you you are not, not so much lonely but it's 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 kind of silo um and i i do do really um try and um bring in some other perspective and see if we can kind of collaborate together hey marianne <laughs> um yeah but um but 
I'm, I'm there in a voice and um, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's it's a challenge sometimes working in the as as a social worker in a medical centre. Yes, yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Just to as we're winding up, it's um, those connections that you have into the community, those the, those relationships that you've you've built over the years. Those are you know the the things that we're supposed to be looking at for locations, you know, to so that people's you know needs are met. But this has already been done, you know. So sometimes we don't need to reinvent the wheel. You know, people like Diane have made those connections and those links within the community and that wraparound care, which is just you know for holistic care is necessary. Thinking of the the whole per, whole person. Okay, well, thank you, Diane, and yeah. I'd love you to stay for the rest of the meeting if you would like to. <laughs> I just, <laughs> we've got Robin Ann here. Um, um, what in a Robin Ann? Can you, Marina, you? can you see me and can you hear me? We can see you and we can hear you. Okay. Robin Ann and I go back um, a long way, maybe primary school, don't we, Robin Ann? Absolutely, we do so indeed. We, nice to we, see you, Carol. Yeah, you too. And our children went to school together. So welcome. Um, and you've been you've been working alongside Andrew Miller. He um he highly recommended you to come and talk to us about wellness in general thanks, practice. Thanks, thanks, Andrew. Thanks, so um kia ora and um thank you for inviting me to this. Um, I currently work as a nurse prescriber in a rural clinic in Dargaville Medical Centre. Um and when I worked at Dargaval at Bush Road Medical Centre up till a year ago, Andrew Miller, who's a wonderful general practitioner and was right into, um, you know, the health of people and the holistic approach with people, which actually is what we should all be doing, isn't it, really? So he introduced, and I'm wondering if you guys can see this. Our wellness, the wellness wheel, yes, we can. I could get um, a picture of that up, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'll that would be great if you can. Yeah. So basically, he um, he's it's it's he said just to keep this really simple, and I guess it is pretty simplistic, and it's actually really easy to follow. And I think we all actually do it, but don't realise we do it. But it's a gentle reminder for us a to engage people and to start conversations about things that maybe aren't necessarily what the person comes in to see us about. But it's also about the person having a voice. For me, it's about the actual person I'm seeing having a voice. And so it's called the well-being wheel. And it has um, seven arrows that point to it. And you've got the, the mental health, the whare or the housing, the wairua, the spiritual, the mahi, the employment or education, your whānau or your family, money, Tinana, physical health, and the drugs, alcohol, and smoking. And basically, I have this in my room, and I usually sit it on my desk where the patient is going to sit. And one, we have a conversation, and I often say to them, and what Andrew says is, look, just why don't you get a pen? You don't even have to tell me. And point to me on this wheel what's most important to you. So they may have come in for something completely unrelated, but this is just about opening up the can and allowing them to speak what's actually most important to them to see how we can, you know, I might be wanting to talk to them about their CVD risk or something to do with their diabetes or um, their medication, their blood pressure, but in actual fact, what they're really worried about is putting food on the table. And how, and for me, that's actually ties in really well with the whole physical side of things, because if they can't afford to be buying the good food, how are they going to manage their physical health? How are they going to listen or listen to what I'm saying to them about their medication? They possibly can't even afford their medication. So I think that um, for me, it's a real gentle reminder. It's an op a opener to conversations. And, and if someone says to me, you know, this is, I'm quite happy to sit back and say to someone, well, actually, let's not talk about your blood pressure today. Let's talk about this. And then that can go down the avenue of a multitude of things, as we all know. It could be related to ACC. It could be historical. It could be quite current, quite relevant, or um, current or past. And then I'll open up into things like the health coach or into... Um, the hip 
which is the health improvement practitioner, and allow people to be able to go and say, this is a free service that we can offer for you, for them to actually go and speak to that person and start building relationships, as you say, Carol, you know, it's about building relationships and forming relationships. And that actually builds up a trusting thing for me. And then the patient will often come back and see me and talk to me about their physical health at a later stage. Um, that's, that's just in a really simplistic, You've just gone on mute, Robin Ann. My husband would love that. Um, <laughs> um, it's it's being designed, as, as we speak, it's being designed to go into software for patients and providers to share the info. It's the philosophy of using it as a holistic wellbeing approach. So it's just another tool, but it's quite simplistic and it's actually quite a neat way of um, engaging people. I find, I find it's really good. That's so good. So can you just um, can you just also just tell us a little bit about um, the difference between coming um, out of, from a practice that wasn't a healthcare home practice and going into one when you started a bush road? Because I know that that um, yeah, did you could you see that, you know when you started working with Andrew and um, that model of care? Um, yeah, can you just talk about that a little bit, Robin Ann? So I think that. Um... It, it's like Andrew is extremely passionate and I think more and more we're seeing a lot more people passionate and he's actually just putting a voice to what is actually relevant and I think that the what and what is important and I think there is always a bit of resistance when you introduce something new and I think healthy healthcare, healthy homes and healthy healthcare initiatives I think from my perspective from looking at it from an outsider's perspective looking in I think there's always this thing well hey we are doing that or we are doing this and maybe the people aren't just responding to how we want them to respond or we're not um that's not our problem that's their problem I think that doing it from a healthy healthy perspective like we are now is that we're looking at people in a more holistic approach and it's not just in numbers just you know it's not just bums on seats and it's, it's more um, inclusive, it's more, um, I think patients get a lot more out of it, we're human, they see that we're human, we're actually really caring about them, and I think it actually flows through into the work environment, I think that in the work environment we see that, okay, our, our wairoa, is it our wairoa, our spirituality, all of that is just as important as everything else that's going on, and so for me, from we weren't in this, we weren't working in a practice at Bush Road like that. And now we are, or we they are, and certainly as I come into this rural environment, this rural environment really um, hones it, and it's about the people. It's not about the practice, it's about the people. And the people in the practice are just as important as the people you're seeing. And so that's about our whānau, that's about how we are physically, how we are mentally, and it's an inclusive approach, and I think it works really, really well. Does that make sense, Carol, or is that what you're yeah, wanting? No, no that, that, that does. Um, I just had some feedback of someone coming into your practice, actually, and they, um, they came in and I think as a nurse, the role is growing bigger and bigger, particularly in the oh, rural yeah. areas, isn't it? Like yeah. you, you yeah. would be often the point of contact. Is that correct? Yes, it is. So in, in a rural setting like we are at Dargaville Medical Centre, I think we're the only hospital in New Zealand that is associated right next to a secondary um, health provider, so the hospital. So we run an acute clinic seven days a week. We have after hours clinics in the hospital and, and our doctors often are rotated and work in the after hours clinics as well. Nurses, as we all know, are being um, encouraged to upskill and provide more and more um, trick care and to work to your top of your scope and top of your practice. And I think that um, working in this environment for me as working with the primary and the secondary care it certainly op opens opportunities to actually start to be at the top of the list rather than the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff mm. and I think that having said that unfortunately as with all of us in health we're under resourced as far as encouraging nurses to come into this environment because 
Um, I I don't think it's just a monetary thing. I think we're seen as the second as the second tier, not as skilled as others. And I actually uh, we're just doing so much, and I think that it's vitally important what we do in primary health as nurses. Oh, vitally yes. important and absolutely and crucial to people. And as I don't know if any of you are nurses or not, or um, in. I think that patients open up a lot more and they tell different stories to different clinicians, don't they? We all know that. And a nurse can often get something different from a doctor and I think it's possibly that we answer open-ended, ask open-ended questions. Yes, and we're not <laughs> usually got that time constraint quite so much, have we, Robin Ann? No. I, I was just um, an example of, of what the feedback I've had from what happens at Dargaville is that you would... Um, people would book in to see you directly. Is that that's correct, isn't it? Yeah. So so once it's not a GP. Once, yeah. So once a week I'm a nurse on the floor and I can be in the non-acute side where we're seeing people for dressings or we're seeing people for immunizations or infusions. Or I can be on the acute clinic and I can see people coming in for triage and non-acutes. Or um, then on the next two days a week I run I'm an, I run clinic, like I have a book, the same as what a doctor would have a book. I have half hour appointments and I see all new patients. So any new patient coming into the practice sees me. Anyone who I have an extra cap really that I wear and that I have speciality training in women's health. And so I can do long acting reversible contraception. Um, I do... I have a passion in mental health as well. And anyone who's got needs a medication review or they need virtually just anything. And I mean, I'm well aware of my scope and I don't work with out of my scope, but working like for me that like now I'm seeing what people coming back to see me all the time now, like they've come in as a new patient and they've been, they've just enrolled in the practice and they've said, okay, you need to come in and see Robin Ann. And I'll get people that are coming in that are have, um, never known that they've even got a high blood pressure or what's going on in their life or or they've got high cholesterol or uh, they've started on contraception and they're a new mum and they um, have are coming back to see me quite often for regular follow-ups and checks and it's an it's an amazing role it's an amazing privilege to be part of their journey and whatever it is and it works extremely well from my perspective it works really well yeah just a, a real example of the incredible work that, you know, is being done, you know, rurally and, and in a lot of the practices. But, you know, it's like um, that would have been um, a lot of what you're doing now would have been a GP role. And um, mm -hmm. from the feedback I got of a, of, a, of a client who came over, had seen a couple of locum GPs yeah. and, and then they yeah. got an appointment with you and mm. they felt like they had finally... Mm -hmm. um, it's not a, you know been been seen as a whole person. Realised yeah, yeah. they had lots going on, and I think then you um, took them to see your hip um, yeah. as well, so that they they came away feeling like they. Well, we work we work from a different model of care to a GP, and I think we work. Uh, I mean, as well as a nurse prescriber, you know, I am looking at diagnosis and intervention and. And all of that, but I also think that I have that extra 15 minutes. And the beauty of that is that I'm I'm not necessarily looking at fixing something. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at, you know, and I mean to me it works complementary. It's complementary to the GPs as well. And it and it works really well in Dargaville Medical Center. Like I must say that they are really supportive, extremely supportive. And we have we do have a lot of locums, and people get really scared of locums because they don't have the same person. Whereas if with a nurse, you often have a lot of nurses that work here for a very long time. So they're gonna see that same person quite regularly, whereas they may not see their own GP for months and months. Whereas there is job, there is often, um, and we have nurses that run CBD clinics. We have a diabetic nurse specialist. Uh, we have a skin um New, so I mean, it works very differently from other practices as a in a rural practice. And I, and I, if no one's got a nurse prescriber, we we have a um, what do they call physician's assistant who's come to us from America, and that also is another role. She does a lot more of the acute and Doctor T, but I do a lot of Doctor T in that as well. So it's it's complementary, I think, and it works well. Yeah.
Thank you so much, Robin Ann. Again, you know, it's an example of, of having to get creative and to yeah. meet the needs of our of our of our clients. Does anybody have any questions for Robin Ann? Anyone like to say anything there? Welcome to Ishan. I saw you came in later. Nice to see you. Um Anyone got any? Where are we? Jess, have you got anything that you'd like to add? Hi, Isha. Um, no, that's great, Roman Ann. Um, good to hear about okay. um, yeah, the breadth and depth of the work that you're doing. Um, we just yeah. heard from Di before, and you know, um, I feel like general practice is is working a lot differently. And you know, and um, it, working more holistically as well, and you know the breadth yeah. and depth of experience and knowledge that you've got, your skill set's pretty, um, pretty wide. Wide. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, and okay. and it is um, the, you know you, the rural practices are unique in terms of there isn't other services, so you are kind of having to widen your skill set. Um, I see that Cheryl had mentioned the practice in Wairua that's on site with the hospital, and they they're doing a lot of the cute work. Um, Cheryl's put that in the chat. So, um, yeah. so there are some practices around the country. Um, yeah. that are kind of doing similar work to you. So yeah, no, that's great. I see you've got your hand up, Hassan. I'll pass over to you. Yes, Ishan. Kia ora team. Um, thanks, Carol, and thanks, Jazz. Um, lovely to meet you guys online once again and see everyone. Um, thanks, Robin, and for your presentation. You're welcome. Um, I've, I may have missed the point, but I just want to confirm the wellness wheel that you use. Do you integrate that into some sort of a care plan for the patient? And do you keep an electronic record on your PMS? At this stage, it's not in the computer program. It is going into, it's planning on being, from my understanding, is integrated into an IT program. So it then can be added to the patient's notes. So I guess if I look at it like that, if we look on MedTech or Evolution on the dashboard, we had the advanced care planning or care planning and we were integrating it with secondary care. Does that make sense from... You and you and GP mm. Lang, do you guys remember that? Are you doing that? No? On people's dashboards? Robin Ann, I, Robin, Robin Ann, I think the dashboards can be quite quite specific to the areas that people are in. Oh, um, okay. Rather, like us in Northland, we're quite lucky that we've got that dashboard and we can use it, but some other areas might not have the same um, so would functionality. It be, would it be shared care under in other areas? Would it be that? Mm, it depends on the whānau yeah, tahi tool is so. also uh, not in every area as well, yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, my answer is at this stage, no. It would only be me writing it in the body of the notes about the conversation that I've had with the client and with the patient. Yeah, it would be good to yeah. have it, you know, um, mm. on the dashboard or on something like that so we could actually tick or not tick. Mm. I'm not sure if you were um, on, I think to, to Order is rolling out a um, program specifically with the wellness um, wheel. Yeah. So um, that's, um, and so that it's incorporated in their, in their care. I will send that out to all of you, the document of the wellness wheel, but um, when I get a hold of it at the end of this session. So yeah. Did yeah. you have anything else to say, Ishan? Um, yeah. Thank you. We just, I just laminated it. We just laminated the wheel and I just, at this stage, just have it on my desk and give a person a pen, a marking pen, and they can mark what's important to them. Yeah. But for me, it's just about opening up a conversation. Sure. Yeah. Kelly. Yeah, hi. I just could sort of give a bit of a South perspective, I guess, and what, because, um, um, yeah, great to hear what you're doing, Robin Ann, and I think okay. it, definitely is a aspect of rural practices um because mm. yeah we've been doing what you've been saying in some of our in in some of the more progressive rural practices in the south um and it's yeah. kind of come down to a, a out of necessity because you know I, the practice that I used to work in we um we could never recruit enough GPs so therefore we needed to start looking at different ways of doing things and that's where that nursing toposcope comes about um 
Yeah. And it's, I guess that's kind of starting to come through to a lot of more urban practices now that that difficulty in recruitment and everything. Um, mm. But I actually think the real practices are straight ahead of our, of our urban colleagues and how they utilise the team and um, and how yeah how they are able to utilise a, a wider professional base of skills. So that's good. It's cool. Oh, and also um, yeah, the places um, around the care planning and it is done around other places and done around down south as well. So it just I think it probably is implemented in different ways around the different places. Um, but also available to us now. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much, Robin Ann. Um, what else Thank was you. I going to um, ask you? Um, oh, one of the things, because obviously Mel was going to be um, talking to you and she is unwell today. So um, she just said um, she just wanted to know um, what your journey through Bush Road was, which we've discussed. Um, it's kind of like, what does a typical day look like for you over in Dargaville Medical Centre? Okay, so for an example, yesterday I started at 7.30 and I was in the acute triage clinic as people came in. Um, then I was on e -nurse, which means that things that I can deal with or pick up that I was within my scope of practice. So anybody coming in for skin infections, wound reviews, um, new ACC, new ACC coming in, um, chest infections, uh, cardiac, uh, throat, asthma. Um, I ju it's just huge. So I saw all of those people acutely. Um, and then today I'm on booked appointments and I've seen a person who's a new patient to the area who is a young man and he has a history of mental health issues and went through his medications, his family history, much what a GP would do beforehand and have from that have actually referred him on because I can't do wind certificates and so he needs a wind certificate as well. But again, he's got a point of contact in me and then later on today I'm seeing people, um, some woman for women's health, I'm seeing... Um, another new patient so that depends what's going on with that patient and if need be if they haven't had any screening bloods and things done I'll send them off send them off for that um a young lady that a woman that I saw in acute clinic today had to go came in with um high blood pressure but she also was having AF so sent her off took bloods and sent them off and you know we in the rural practice we could just take them straight across to the hospital take her across get her chest x-ray get all of that done um so a typical day is just what you would see in any general practice, I think, except that we tend to have the acute presentations a lot more like your, your break, what is it? Your coughs, your snots, your breaks, and all of those things are coming in and your cardiac things are coming in. We, have, we work on a triage system, so much the same as, um, in an ED, as an ED presentation, and we're triaging and we have an agreement with the hospital that we, if we see um, triage one or triage two, we straight away go straight through to the hospital. Otherwise, we will um, deal with what we can and what we can't, we will refer on. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Thank you it's so quite, much. It's hard, it's hard to say what a typical day looks like because my typical yeah. day changes from one minute to the next. Yeah. And I guess that's the same in any general practice area. You can be doing one thing and then suddenly you can be doing another thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that as nurses, yes, we are. We're being encouraged to work to the top of our scope or extend our scope continually. The difficulty being, I think, is that um we still from and, and I think it's the same in, in general practice for doctors I think that secondary care still seem to have a lot more of the um kudos does that make sense compared to us in primary care Thanks so much, Robin, and thank you okay. for your time. Thank you. Your thank you. Day. The other thank thing you. is that do um do you work full time? I work three days um, a week and yeah. every alternate week I work four days and I go to an outlying clinic yeah. and people book in and see us out there and basically the same things, you know, people coming for a repeat of their medication and need yeah. assessments, people for exactly the same.
So our, yep. our first speaker today is a very experienced social worker. So do you have social workers' involvement in that in from from um, Jargaville Medical Centre? We were just looking at that in general practice. So we have um, a health improvement practitioner or our yep. HIP. Yeah, and we when they're in short term supports for anything to do with mental health anxiety. We also have a health coach which deals with all of the things like your yeah, um, waking to make lifestyle changes, smoking cessations, sub financial supports, and we have that. We don't have a social worker as such, um, but I I couldn't see that that would I think that that would just enhance our patient journey and the availability of what's there for people, wouldn't it really? Absolutely. The more we can help people with the better. The other thing that we're getting that another person that's starting in Dagobah Medical Centre is a clinical pharmacist. Yes, great. Yeah. Which is another way of, you know, just inclusivity or um, more people we've got, the more that we people, I think, from patients' perspective, it's that wraparound service and that people just say, okay, well, we're all coming from the same for the betterment of that person. That's fantastic. Hey, thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great lovely, day, everybody. Lovely to see you. And you're and more you than too. Well to stay to the end, but if you yeah. need to go, you need to go. So thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Robin Ann. Lovely. Bye. 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 Okay. Awesome. Okay, so, so one of the things that we um, are looking at doing for our next peer group is. Um, it is a peer group meeting and, you know, we really want to hear from you um, as well because, you know, some of you guys will be doing some incredible work within your own PHOs and so what um, we thought about we could do for next for our June peer session is hear from you on what, what's going right within your um, organisation, just one example of something that's going really, really well, and another example of something that you'd like to improve on. Because I think that partly part of this thing is that you're all um, doing incredible jobs within your own environments, and um, let's not all reinvent the wheel. So it's an opportunity to share what we're doing really well, and you'll know what those are, and, um, and, and perhaps those things that look, or one, one, one thing of each that looks like um, you could do better, that you'd like to do better. There's always something we want to improve on. We also have our Wānanga this Thursday, busy week, if you are joining us for that. And um, I'm going to hand it over to um, Jazz. She's got a few things she'd like to talk about um, regarding our conference and regarding collective action. So um, thanks so much. And then we will finish off with a karakia. So Jazz, thank you. Mute myself. Thanks, Carol. And um, yeah, apologies for those that joined late. Uh, Mel would have usually been here supporting um, and uh, facilitating some of this. So thanks so much, Carol, for stepping in and um, yeah, and, and helping helping us keep on track. Um, the couple of things that I just wanted to mention to the group was um, conferences up there. So um, I can gladly say that registrations are open for our conference. So the dates are 29th and 30th of August. With this year, we're doing a, a multi-day event. So we're um, taking it out the ballpark this year. So if you want to um, get an early bird rate, that closes on the 30th of June. So um, get your applications in or registrations kind of in as soon as you can, if you want to take um, benefit of those early rates. The other thing I just wanted to um, let people know as well is we are inviting abstracts. So if you've got people in your community um, or in your organisation that would be interested in presenting, um, the theme of our conference this year is the Pehia Tato e Afina Ai, which is how can we help? So um, yeah, if you feel there is a piece of work that um, someone is involved in and wants to showcase it then please um, make a submission and there is a kind of committee that will kind of go through them and um, come back to you so even if you can um, I mean the more detail you can provide it will just help people make um, the decision but yeah I just encourage you to think about any um, other providers in your community or other organizations as well as just your own.
So that's the conference. Um, the other thing I just wanted to let you all know as well is that I've had a little bit of interest from a couple of what I'm calling locality leads, but they're not technically leading the locality, but they're people within a PHO who've been given some responsibility to look at and or you know look towards um, what does the locality kind of model look like in that Rohi. Um, so I've um, put in a tentative date to start with. Um, so just as you healthcare home leads a meeting, I'm kind of encouraging a network of a community of practice for those locality leads within PHOs to come together to share and support and um, kind of um, yeah connect really. So um, if there are people within your PHO that have that role or that responsibility, please. Um, flick me an email or um, share my email with them. Um, the first date that I've got for that network meeting is, is until the 23rd of June. So we've got a bit of time. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to ask people is, as um, we've got on the, on the, on the screen there, um, there's three more um, sessions within the Wananga online series. And the last one on the 1st of June, it's got collective action. And I was keen to hear from um, you all around um, what would be most useful for you to hear in that 45 minutes around collective action, thinking about um, your roles in that healthcare home space and within your PHO. Um, so if you want to talk now, I think we've got a bit of time, have we, Carol? Yeah. Has anyone got any ideas? Sorry, my mic was off. We do have some time. Oh, because I really want to make the most of that 45 minutes. It is pretty tight um, and I could talk for a long time about collective action. But what, what are some of the key questions you would like me to answer? I'll go. Oh, oh. Lovey's got a hand Sorry. up. <laughs> do you want to go first, Lovey? Welcome. <clears throat> kia ora, kia ora, aroha mai uh, e te pā, and I apologies for only just jumping in. However, I, I did think um, it's probably quite timely, Jazz, with you mentioning around that, you know, like, uh, you know, like the whole how, how do we get, um, you know, more traction in that space. And just leaving a, a, a marae meeting, so I've been in a komato meeting, and one of the questions that they asked and it was quite relevant i mean maybe the world is telling me something here right but they talked about advocacy and um advocacy um in a space that allows them to have you know better experiences in healthcare and healthcare settings i mean we're all smart people so we know how to ask for what we want and we know that we're we're eligible for certain um you know funded services but our whanau may not and so that's not the, the, the biggest piece. It's around, um, so, so that's a consequence to what, what what maybe we could look at doing. But it's how do we create relationships with different services? So how is it that um, I put my hand up to go to a komato meeting and attend with five of our other relationship managers and our um, CCN lead, you know, like two days with two days notice? And... You know, like some of it is, you know, gets last minute, some of it's well planned. Either way, it happens for a reason. So I just, I mean, I mean, it's not the first time I've been asked this, but it's, it, it is around, you know, how do we create um, really good lasting relationships? How do we network into that relationship? Yes, we could send an email or, um, but, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I've got a couple of ideas. Um, but yeah, just, you know, how do you start, um, a relationship that allows um, the both the you know the deliverer and the receiver to you know like really build on that. Um, yeah, so just that, Jez. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Lovey. Yes, I think Lovey touched on some of the points that I was going to raise there. Um, I, th I think just from I think what our practices would like to hear is um, obviously the collective impact model is there um, and some of it can be relatively high level. So just where they kind of fit in from a frontline um, on the ground approach to collective impact. And I think a good linking 
uh, with the healthcare home model was the patient whānau engagement. And we're working with a couple of practices on that, but it's a really new space for a lot of practices. But the thing is, localities and health reforms has created that space of being like, right, okay, th something is going to change, um, and we we're, we're going to start to get innovative. So, which is awesome, but it's just the practices are looking for a little bit of guidance around that. So, perhaps maybe an example or two. Um, yeah. Awesome. We don't have Renee online and from Whanganui. She's done some amazing work connect, just recently connecting with Whanau and asking what matters to Whanau. And so, um, yeah, I might show us tap a few of you. If you've got some examples um, that you're aware of, please um, just flick me an email um, and we can showcase. But And you're right, I think, if we can, um, you know, make it relevant for people on the ground, like this is what it means. Um, I feel like a lot of the rhetoric and a lot of the discourse around collective action is very high level and people haven't quite made the connection, like what does it actually mean to me um, and, and how can I use it to, yeah, strengthen those relationships or even start those relationships, as you say, Lavi, it's really good, really good point. So, yeah, thanks, Esan. Now, Lavi, I can still see that you've got your hand up, but um, I'm not sure whether that's just from before, whether you had another question. No, sorry, I'll take that down. Thanks, oh. Jess. <laughs> no problem. Anything else from any others? Or any other questions just generally that I might be able to answer before I hand back to Carol? Cool. Kapai. Before we get to finish just a wee bit earlier today, I'm just going to go to my closing. Here we go. We'll do a closing karakia and hopefully we'll get to um, see you um, on Thursday for our wānanga on proactive care. Um, really keen to have um, some feedback from you all on how you're finding all of these things. I will send out a follow-up email from today with a couple of bits like the wellness wheel in there and yeah please feel free to send us an email and we will stay in touch have a lovely rest of your week and it's lovely to see the sun out in the far north at the moment thank goodness okay okay we'll just do our closing karakia and see you all soon he karakia whakamutanga Ko rangi nui e tu nei, ko papa tuanuku e tā koutou nei, ki a tau te rangi mārie, ki runga i tō tātou mahitahi, homie huie tāeki e. Kia ora, kā kite. Kia ora, kuna. Kia ora, thank you. Kia ora, thank you.